We're here talking with Angela from Common Treasury Farm, and we're going to learn a little bit more about flax. This is an old farm in Lobster Valley. We're in the Lobster Valley south of LC, Oregon. It originally was a dairy in the 50s. Flax has been kind of my pet project, and it mostly comes from Belgium and Ireland originally, but now it's growing everywhere, and predominantly China and, and Canada, the biggest flax producers. Flax is, is by and large, one of the strongest, you know, bast fibers. And its longevity, its diability, um, its ease of growing, its annual crop, you can grow it practically everywhere. I mean, it's amazing kind of stuff. Here in um, the Willamette Valley, particularly, was uh, a big flax producing region um, for World War II. And once the war ended and the um, all the bombed out Belgium uh, manufacturing facilities came back online, they took on the fax production again and, and it switched over there because they have a grading system of, you know, for quality and they have superior cultivars and for the war they just took anything they could get, you know, here in the U.S. So we never developed a standard to create quality within the, the fiber and lost out, I think, considerably. <laughs> So when I harvest the flax, I just come right in and yank it directly out of the ground. And then you've got these little tiny rootlets holding on. But the fiber goes all the way down into the very base. It'll be all wrapped up in a probably about an armful of flax and then stood out in the field to dry. So it's been uh, pulled up from the ground and dried. So it's got all the um, seed top still on it. And then it goes through the ripper or the ripple, and that pulls off the seed tops. And then you lay this out in the um, in the field for dew redding, or you put it into a some kind of vessel for pond redding. So it could be a stagnant pool on the side of your stream on your farm, or it could be a um, I have a horse trough. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, an easy yeah. way to do it. Right. And you just line it with plastic and then fill it up with water and you let it um, sit in there for approximately 10 to 14 days, depending on how hot it is, because you need this stagnant uh, enzymatic process to really take hold of the, the stem and then break down the lignans that are in the, inside the stem that hold the fibers together. And it's the outer part of the stem that we're dealing with. And then, okay. then when you dry it after the writing process, you break it which is basically just snapping it in half. So you do this repeatedly, and then, then you get to a point where you've got, let's say, something that looks like this. We've just got a little bit of chaff still holding on there. Flick it through here, and you've got, like, it's basically a wooden knife, and it's not sharp, but it just has a little bit of an edge to it, and you just slide it along the edge and it, of the fibers, it and it just takes off the rest of these, um, the core. Mm -hmm and that falls away. And then you've got basically a hank of, of loose flax that now needs to be hackled. And that's gonna be sending it through the combs. But they're incredibly sharp. They're not like um, combs for wool that have kind of a springy tine. Mm -hmm. They're like nails. That then separates the line from the toe. And the line is the long fibers, and the toe are these little tiny short ones. Mm -hmm. That would be toe, and this would be line. And line is what's spun into um, linen, and then toe is for industrial use, filler, insulation, mulch, mm -hmm. you know, has a lot of different other uses, yeah. but usually not in textiles. Point, but this is from Belgium. This is flax top, and that's, and that's going to be processed um, commercially on big roving wow. machines. And then when that's spun, then it looks like that. And then when it's woven, it looks like that. <laughs> yeah. So that's your finished project. Yeah. It would be fantastic if we could grow enough flax to, to be able to provide seed, organic seed, for um, small fiber producers that wanted to do an acre or two here and there to combine with their own um, on-farm production of either sheep or alpaca or mm -hmm. angora wool, all kinds of different things can be blended with flax and make a very interesting fiber out of it. But uh, that's, I think the seed production is, is high on my list. 